slammed it. This one might be better. I'm here this morning at one of my favorite ponds to fish because it usually treats me pretty well. I hadn't been here in quite a while, but uh, interested to see what happens this morning. Cold December morning. Nobody else out here, which is a rare occurrence on this pond. So I'm interested to see what I can get on here today. You throw in a couple swim baits and a top water to start out here. Water looks like it's a little bit low, which usually not a good thing for a pond that's this generally shallow to begin with. It might be more concentrated out towards the middle of the pond right now. Being this cold, that might be the case too. I'm thinking a rattle trap might actually be the move here pretty soon since that's what I've caught quite a few fish on in this pond to begin with in the first place. But also this time of year lends to the rattle trap pretty well. Colder water and whatnot. Oh! That was a fish right there. Dang it. Golly. That was a fish too. Don't know what happened. Just bumped it. One bite on the swim bait, one bite on the rattle trap so far. one decent fish feels like eh just a little dude just a little fatty thank you for that little buddy that was fun got my blood pumping anyway <laughs> that was a nice little bite there Oh no, that was a fish right there. Don't know why they're having such a hard time getting it today. That's the fourth bite I've had and only landed one fish. Missed one on a swim bait and two on the rattle trap now. There's one. Doesn't feel any better than the first one, unfortunately. Yep, just a little dude. Just another little dude, even a little smaller actually. <laughs> Thank you, little buddy. Well, that's it for this corner, at least for now. 
might come back to it in a little bit, but I'm gonna move on for now. but a little bit better. That one there crushed that rattle trap. Not really better at all actually, but <laughs> just a hard fighter, I guess. Thank you, little buddy. Don't know if you can tell or not, but there's a little underwater point right here that that fish was sitting on the end of, out on the end of a windblown point. That's very typical for a windy day for them to be sitting on the point, waiting for bait fish to come by. Those other fish earlier were actually on a little bit of a point too, but it was just more of a blunt point, a little more wide. This one's kind of narrow and obvious. That one's a little more of a gradual point, but a point nonetheless. Wow. See, this is one big reason I don't say where I'm fishing a lot of times because I don't want the place to be trashed like this. I always see trash around this pond and a lot of times it is fishing related. And as you can see here, this is like a little kid's fishing pole. So when people tell me, oh, I just want to go with my little kid, you know, there's nothing to worry about. Not really. Oftentimes it is little kid fishing stuff that I find around the ponds. And to be quite honest, if you have kids that are fishing with you, I know that you're actually much more likely to keep fish because your little kid will want to keep it. And I've seen people many, many times keep undersized fish or attempt to keep undersized fish just because their little kid was insisting on wanting to keep it. So that's definitely not a viable reason for me to tell you a spot is that you only plan on bringing your kid. Yeah, this grass is so thick. I'm actually going to go to a smaller, lighter rattle trap here. It'll be harder to throw in this wind, of course, but just getting hung up in this grass way too much over here. fish right there. Golly. What happened? Gosh. Came sideways over that grass and he smashed it. I felt the bump in the rod too, but gosh. Golly. Thank you, little buddy. That was fun. We're back over here in this corner where I had a few bites this morning. So, I'm going to try to get a couple more right here and then I'll be on my way. Just to do this 
us at home, kids. Ah, lost it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and tie on a crawdad colored one. I've never done that in here. It's really clear water, so it might not be the best, but there is grass, and I know there's got to be crawdads that live in here, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a try for the remainder of my time here today. quite a few crushed it like a big guy well I'll tell you what though sure is fun to catch them on that rattle trap they slam that sucker thank you for playing little buddy oh, oh. there was another one I just missed on the very next cast one thing I haven't mentioned yet today and I feel like it's very important is the way I've been fishing this lipless crankbait you'll see I've never reeling it just straight in I'm always pumping my rod when I throw out deeper I'm letting it sink for a little while for about five to ten seconds depending on how far out there I've thrown it and then I'll just start doing what they call yo-yoing it back I'm just lifting my rod and dropping it back down to slack line lifting it dropping it back down to slack line and that bait is doing, like I said, what they call yo-yo, and it's going up and down with that erratic action that a lipless crankbait has every time it darts back up. I feel like that triggers a lot more bites than just reeling a rattle trap or a lipless crankbait straight in. Even when I throw it on top of grass or shallower like this, you'll see I'll pump my rod as I reel it. I don't let it sink as much the grass like I said it's right there near the surface as you saw my bait popped up out of the water after I popped it off some grass right there when it first landed so I won't let it sink near as long when I'm going shallower over the top of grass but I will still pump my rod I'm always doing that when I throw a rattle trap of course as soon as I start talking about what's triggering these fish the bite shuts off well it's a little afternoon and I got here a little after seven so been here for about five hours it's about time to call it a day 